Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Aaron, and this is Stuart behind my dad. And today we're going to unbox the LG 32 EP950, which is the ultra fine OLED Pro display, and very exciting. Let's pop it open, shall we? Yeah. Let's see what we find. Yay. What do we see here? Okay, first of all. Let's start with the side, yeah. Looks like a boomerang. <laughs> it's not a boomerang. <laughs> what is it? It's the stand for the computer. It's the stand, you're right. So in here we've got uh, quite a minimalist stand. Maybe I can hold it. And then we have the accessory box. But it comes with lots of cables. We have a mini HDMI to USB adapter, I think that is. Uh, here we have a USB-C adapter. It is USB-C, not Thunderbolt, so it won't daisy chain. Uh, we have display ports. Daddy, I'll give them some cable ties. Okay, thank you. Uh, HDMI cable. Uh, it's HDMI 2, so it takes the HDR flag. We have a BP power supply. Uh, USB 3. I think I think I found I think I found the instructions over there. Power supply, yes indeed. Ooh, good heavy power break. Yeah. Now this is important because if we look at the energy rating, you show them that one. That's the that's the U, that's the European one. This is the UK one. You'll see it's energy rating E. Now I know that we're supposed to be um, saving energy, but the thing with an HDR display is it needs a lot of power. Right. Brightness is equal to power. So actually an E rating and a heavy brick of a power supply is a good indicator of some serious engineering. So we're excited by that. Oh, I found a disc, Dad. Yeah, that's all the manuals and things. And we put that down there. That's an instruction. That's all that. We'll put that on the ground. And what have you got there, Aaron? What's that other piece of paper? Okay. This is our factory calibration report. So we like to see those. Um, here Let's have a quick look at that. And uh, here's going to be the um, board. Okay. Very, very flat, and that's what we'd expect. The reason why I'm interested in JOLED is that it's fantastically accurate. And of course, being OLED, no halos to worry about, no local dimming. Because of the incredibly good black level, we're going to get um, a million to one contrast ratio easily. Um, and to put that into perspective, we're expecting 0 0.0005 blacks whereas the LCD displays are typically something around uh, 0.05. So about a hundred times more dynamic range in the black level. And now it's time for the monitor now itself. it is. That's exactly right. Let's take off this. Yeah. And first of all, something over here. Something over here. This is the pin for the stand. Is that no, a screw? That is, that's the pin for the stand. Is that any screws or something? I don't see any screws. Yeah. Ah! Oh my god. I can, I can hold that. It's pretty light. Can you pull it out? Yeah. yeah. Pull it, out then. it is pretty light. You're right. Daddy, Daddy, leave it to me. Leave it to okay. me. Okay. Let's uh, just Daddy, reveal the display out. itself. Wow. Incredibly thin. Very, very thin. Um, at first, I was a little bit worried that the stand was quite light, but when you see how light and thin the display is, I mean, I can easily pick it up with one hand. Um, let's start by looking at the back. Open. On the back, we can see the range of inputs. We've got two display ports. We also see this beautiful one stand. HDMI port, and then the USB hub with three extra Daddy, ports. I opened it. Let's put it together then, shall we? Daddy, there's, there's, Daddy, there's a sign over here. Yeah, we can leave that there. But we want this to go on there, so we need the stand on there, please. Okay. Okay. Daddy, Daddy, so it's a standard it? base amount. Daddy, I'll take this stand. And, and we'll pop that in there. And screw this. As, oh, okay, so it's one finger screw. You just Daddy. fold that up and then you can turn it by hand. That folds up and then just turn it. So one finger screw, so very easy to put together. Put it together in a few minutes. Screw, 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 screw. screw, screw. screw you better screw. check the tightness of that one for me, Aaron. Ah, too hard. Okay, when it's too hard, we just fold that down flat. And then that's the base of the display, so we just hook that in oh my and oh, okay. Oh, okay. locked okay. it in, okay? Yeah. So let's pick that up. Let's pick this up. Again, very, very light. Let's move the box off. Yeah, I can add that. Push, it, push it to the front for me. Leave it to me. Leave it Thank to you. Me. And here we go. Oh, nice. 
Now, oh, this wow. display Thank is you. VESA 400, which tells us two things. Peak brightness between 400 and 600, but as I say, it's also listed as true black. What I haven't found is the control for this monitor yet. Um, is it on the front, Aaron? Can you see anything on the front? Um, nope. Only this. I think uh, the uh, control. Uh, it's under there. Look. Uh, let's turn this over. Oh, yeah. There it is. I can see a button. There's a button there? Yep, there's a button. It's an off and on button. No, it's more than an off and on button. This is a joystick, four way joystick menu button. Um, which is quite nice because it's quite difficult to get your hand, well, at least in my setup, it's quite difficult to get my hand to controls on the back of the monitor. This one is underneath and at the front. Uh, so that's where we're going to access all of the menus. Uh, so that's that's a nice touch and we look forward to doing that. So let's turn it on, shall we, Aaron? Yep. Yes, oh, okay, okay. Let's do that. Do we need a cut? cut? So here it is installed. I have two displays on the desk. Both displays have an HDMI switcher connected, so I can switch them both at the same time using one remote. Let's look at the menus. I do love having the control hidden but accessible underneath the screen. That's a really neat feature. There's an information selection, which confirms the incoming signal, the picture mode, firmware version, and the hours in use, which is also quite nice. Notice by default that the refresh rate is set to 5997. But here in the UK, I'm usually working at 50p. So if I pull that thumbstick forward for 10 seconds, it reveals a hidden menu. It enables the 50p modes, and this shows up in the general settings. There is a warning that this can cause flicker, but maybe I'm used to it, it didn't bother me. The input menu is straightforward. We've got HDMI, two display ports, and the USB-C connection. There is also an aspect ratio setting and the import range. I like to set this to a fixed value. I'm using super white, which is legal in the blacks, but full range in the whites, because most TVs are calibrated to that these days. Let's look at the picture modes. Again, a great selection, including all of the Typical display modes, 709P3 2020 in SDR. And then in HDR, we have the PQ curve um, and again P3 or 2020 for the color gamut. Didn't find an HLG option on this display. That calibration written after the P3D65 setting shows that I've changed it from its default. The LG OLED Pro Ultra Fine Display has some free software. So I first downloaded the on-screen control and the first thing that did was to force a firmware update, which is pretty easy to do. The connection here is HDMI direct to the PC and I also needed to connect the USB 3 hub. The on-screen control app allows me to set up multi-screen simulations. I haven't got any plans for it right now, but it's a nice feature. More importantly, there's also a free app called the LG Calibration Studio. So here you can see I can alter the default setups for each of the picture modes. And this is where I changed the P3 setting from the default 48 to a 100 nit calibration. Let's do an analysis now with Kalman and see what that reveals. So the first analysis I'm really keen to look at is to put it into HDR and measure screen brightness across different size windows. I'm getting about 460 nits flat all the way across the 50% windows and then falling off at the end. So this is a, actually a good result. So this is after calibration. Out of the box I did this test and I was getting about 540 nits out of it. In this test you really see the benefit of RGB OLED screens. All the primaries fall off at the same brightness. This chart confirms my calibrated HDR peak brightness. I can see more of the chart if I enable tone mapping with PQ clip point. So here's the big moment. Let's put it to the test and look at real picture content. For that, I used the Amazon Fire Stick. The Fire Stick preferences are switched to HDR always on, and the LG detects that whenever it's selected and switches into HDR mode. It is amazing. Do not be fooled by the peak brightness numbers. The 1 million to 1 contrast ratio shows HDR content very much as intended. Absolutely beautiful. 
The peak highlights shine. The shadows are deep but detailed. The colors are rich. And of course, the SDR mode is true reference quality. I'm really happy. If you are in the market for a professional display, you should definitely check this out. I'm Kevin Shaw. This is Final Color. And I look forward to seeing you soon.